Hey, what's up, my people? Thank you for coming back to watch this one. Really excited to share that I'm going to be able to show you two of three projects that are going to go into the Watchtower project that I've been working on for about a year and a half. So I took that really nasty Redwood slab that I bought off somebody. It was already finished out with some really thick epoxy and they put coffee grounds in it. So I cut out a circle about 52 inches in diameter, took it to my buddy's cabinet shop and flattened it out. And then I moved on to adding a penetrating epoxy because we are going to fill one of the big voids with black and also all of the cracks, but I didn't want that black to bleed through. If I could give any suggestion on this part of the process, I would definitely recommend sanding out those mill mark lines first. After this epoxy cured, it was really hard to get those lines out and just made for way too much work at the end. So after getting the top all sealed up and letting it cure for a day, I prepped the bottom with some Tyvek tape and started prepping one of the voids for the pour. I actually really like both of the voids to be exposed, but this had to be a somewhat practical since it is a small dining piece. So the one on the right, I ended up keeping that kind of gave it like a half moon shape. And the one on the far side is the one we're gonna fill in with some black epoxy. After prepping the melamine with some Tyvek tape, I went ahead and ran a bead of silicone around the perimeter and clamped it all down. That way I ensured that there was no leaks. But just for some reassurance, because you can't always trust the silicone on the one spot, I did a little double dipper and uh, hit the perimeter with it, just to be sure. Whenever I've done these epoxy tables, I've always had really good luck with this GE waterproof bathroom silicone. It dries in about 30 minutes, 100% waterproof. I still wait at least four to five hours just to be safe, um, but it's, uh, it's great stuff. And I know a lot of people use caulking as well. I've just had better luck with this silicone myself. So I took some old HDPE, lined it with some more tape, and honestly, to make it easy, I just taped one side and then I overlapped the tape in the middle and pulled as hard as I could, and it conformed to the actual circle really, really well. Finished up with some silicone, and we were ready for the first pour. You guys know I am sponsored by Superclear, but they have a new product I haven't tried yet, and I figured this would be a great way to kind of showcase what it's meant for. This is their 24 hour deep pour, maximum one inch at a time. During this project, the ambient temperature was 90 degrees. So I knew that in four to five hours, it was gonna be ready for the second pour. There are a few reasons I wanted to use it. One being that it was such a small pour. If I did the actual deep pour product, it would have taken a lot longer. I would have been at least a week, maybe longer to wait for it to actually cure properly before I can even start sanding it. So if you're kind of in the same boat as me and you have a similar project with really little volume, this was roughly a couple quarts here that I mixed up the first part. This 24 hour is amazing. It's viscosity isn't quite as thin as the deep pour, obviously, but it works really, really well. All right, so this took about four to five hours and everything was all tacky and ready for the second pour. Mix up the same amount. I ended up adding some silicone as a dam just because I didn't want resin everywhere and I was gonna be flattening this by a hand plane and not taking it back to the CNC because I wanted to see how well I could do it myself. So I got everything filled up and it was just a waiting game at this point. It is a 24 hour. So the next day, the shorty hardness was just under 80. I think it was like 79. So I let it sit for two days just to be sure. And in the meantime, I got my new base for the table. And typically with the projects that you've seen me do, I always build my own bases. But because this was going into a wash tower, that has live edge trees all throughout it. I felt that this flowy line design fit perfectly. It had this kind of like tree-like twisted nature to it and I just had to have it. So after a few days, I started the molding process and started the flattening process. And you might be wondering why I'm not just taking this back to a wide belt or a CNC. And that's typically what I do to make it easy, but I wanted to try and at least show you guys that it is possible. If you were to do a dam like this and are careful, you can flatten it yourself with some block planes, some hand planes, block sanding. Yes, it's obviously a lot more work, but I needed to start working out anyway. With all of that being said, after I was done with flattening and doing the process to get it to where it needs to be, to be usable, I probably wouldn't do it again. I would probably take it to a wide belt or a CNC to get it reflattened. So for a lot of this process, getting these mill marks out, I used the Rotex 150 and just started hogging off materials best I could. After that, I switched over to the Milescraft jig and cut my final circle, which we ended up just a little over 51 inches in diameter. So we got our circle cut, 
moved it back inside. And typically when I do the C channel, I use my big Vestal router, but I kind of wanted to try something different. So I used my palm router with just a smaller quarter inch bit. And it took a little bit longer, but it was nice not having a bunch of cords run everywhere. You know, I also like to do this too, just because not everyone has Vestool routers or really expensive tools. So it's kind of cool to show that you can do things with these inexpensive pieces of equipment just as easily, well, maybe not as easily, but the outcome, yes, will be the same. So I got lucky on this one. You're obviously seeing me only do the outside four and not the middle one. That's because the base is going to be sitting right on top. The cool thing is those second inset holes line up with the base's holes perfectly. So I'm gonna go through the base, through the C-channel, all the way down into the threaded insert on just those two, and then I'll mark and do the other ones accordingly. So finished off with a quarter inch round over and moved to my block sanding. I got this somewhat flat with the Rotex, but I wanted to make sure that it was as flat as possible. So I started with 80 grit, doing a cross hatch pattern, going back and forth. And another trick I like to use is throwing down some lead from a pencil. That way you kind of get an idea of where you're sanding to make sure you're sanding as evenly as possible and not getting any low spots or high spots. So I went through all the grits all the way up to 220 and then I was able to go ahead and use my orbital to get everything uniform. So everything is sanded completely and I'm applying a last coat of penetrating epoxy because redwood is so soft. I wanted there to be a really tough barrier because you can literally just look at this stuff and it dents. So I was going to let this cure for a day, get super hard, sand it down again with 220 and then take it to my buddy's shop so that I could shoot it with the conversion varnish to make sure that it's totally waterproof and super durable. So a couple weeks ago, I posted the video on the poker table and I had you guys guess the price of that project. There's been one person that's been pretty close, but not quite yet has anyone hit it nail on the head. So if you guys haven't watched that video, go check it out. Um, but in the meantime, let's go deliver this thing. Saw it, dude. Delivery day. How's it going? Let's just set it up on it. Yeah, yeah. set it up on there. Okay. All the all the goods. <laughs> Dude, who made that, dude? I don't know, dude. Some guy, dude. You're so siding first? Yeah, you're going first. Hold it a sec. It's, you can twist, twist it. it this way. There we go. <laughs> like a glove. <laughs> Feet levels on the bottom, I can adjust. 
All right, guys, so we got them in there. This is the other project that I was talking about. I built it a little over a year ago, and it's been in storage. This is an 8-inch Cypress cookie cut from GL Veneer. Uh, I turned Clara Walnut legs that are kind of tapered to give it a little bit of a modern feel. I did two coats of finish when I built this thing. Knowingly, once I got it in here, I was going to do one more to freshen it up. And man, it just came to life. It's such a cool piece, super dense and super heavy. The really tough part about this project is there isn't really a wide belt big enough as far as the throat to put it through. I don't have anyone local with like a wood miser or a wood whiz, so I had to hand plane with my Lee Nelson for weeks to get this thing flat and to get all the mill marks off, but definitely paid off. So if you remember in the beginning of the video, I said you're going to see two of three projects going into this place. And currently I'm working on the third, but I want your guesses in the comments on what you think I'm going to be making for this space. As you can see, it's not a huge space, but it is something super custom, uh, something I haven't done before, and it'll kind of complete the room. So that's about as much as I'm going to give you. So throw a comment down below. Let me know what you think I'm building next that I'm also doing a video on. And then also, I really love your thoughts on how these two pieces came out. Do you like how the Redwood slab came out with that one exposed part? The live edge showing or do you think i should have filled it in with the epoxy hopefully you guys have found some value out of this video got to see some really cool architecture with how this log home was built i like to bring these kind of projects to the table to give you insight with some just super custom off the wall pieces that you don't typically see and i would truly appreciate if you gave any sort of feedback on the video video quality the last video I got some feedback about the microphone so I've been working on that process. I'm very receptive and I want to make sure that the experience you have watching my videos is top notch and enjoyable. So I'm going to go get to work on this project. I'll give you guys a few once overs on the redwood table but like I always say get out there and build something. Cheers.